Welcome to edusati.com, your partner in education. In this session, we'll discuss the concept of verbs. Any word that tells or asserts something about a person or thing is known as a verb. In simple words, as we said in the junior classes, action words are known as verbs. Now, the person who does a work, that is the person, no, the word that tells, asserts something about that person. Now, the person who is doing that work is known as the subject and whatever the subject does is the verb. So, whatever he is doing is the verb. Now, mind the verb, word doing in the definition, wherever in the sentence, if we observe something happening, so the word that justifies this happening, that tells you about something being happening, this word is the verb. Now, a verb may not only tell you about the actions, but also about the processes or state of being. For example, Rajan ate an apple. Now, first of all, we locate where are the nouns. Now, the nouns are Rajan and Apple. Now, who is doing something? Who is basically working in this sentence? Now, obviously, Rajan is working. So, Rajan becomes the subject. And what is he doing? He is eating because he ate. So, the word that justifies the action done by Rajan, that is whatever he did, what did he do? He ate. So, ate becomes the verb. Likewise, I have fought a good fight. Now, I have I as a pronoun and fight as a noun. Now, who is doing the work? I am doing the work. So, I become the subject. And what am I doing or what did I do? I fought. So whatever action did I do in this sentence becomes the verb. So fought becomes the verb. As we just said, a verb may tell you or justify the state of being. Now, Bob is tall. Here, Bob is the subject. Because whom are we talking about? We are talking about Bob. And here we do not see any action being uh, taking place like Bob is not doing anything so that does not mean that we do not have any verb in this sentence we do have a verb the verb is is why because is is justifying the state of being of Bob that is what is the state of being of Bob that he's tall what is the personal quality of the Bob that he's tall what is his current status that he's tall? So is is justifying the state of being of Bob, so it becomes the verb. Likewise, girls are dancing. Now in this sentence, what is what are the girls doing? They are dancing. So dancing is the verb. It is the process that they are doing, it is the process that they are following. So dancing becomes the verb. So in our discussion, we have said that whatever thing justifies the work is the verb. A thing that may interest you is that generally a word that ends in ing is a verb. Uh, it may or may not be the main verb but it is a verb. So ing is a verb suffix. Like in this case dancing. Dancing ends in ing and it is a verb here and it is the main verb here. Now we have two different kinds of verbs which are transitive verbs and intransitive verbs. Now before we go uh, to discuss, we move further in the discussion of what is a transitive verb and what is an intransitive verb, we must understand one thing and rewrite the equation of the sentence. Now we already have said that a sentence is basically a subject plus a verb and an object is 
an optional element. This means that a sentence must have a subject and an and a verb object may or may not be present. So a transitive verb is the one in which uh, which has an object that is a sentence that has a subject and has an object has the verb there would be a transitive verb. So the verbs that need an object are transitive verbs. Now for example I told. Now obviously I is a subject told is told is the verb but it is not a complete phrase in itself because it is incomplete. I cannot just simply say I told. So told takes an object. I told something or someone about something. Now here since it needs an object to complete the sense of the sentence Thus, told is a transitive verb. But if I write sentence, I ate. Now, who ate? I ate. It has a complete significance. It has a complete thought. Or I dance. It's a better uh, example if I say I dance. Now, I dance has a complete thought. Since it has a complete thought, dance is will be known as an intransitive verb because it does not need an object to complete its sense. So a sentence which has a subject and an object is a transitive verb. Likewise, if a sentence has a subject but no object, it would be an intransitive verb. Now, for example, the horse walks. Now, here, walks is the verb because it's justifying an action being taking place. So, walks is the verb. And who walks? The horse. So, horse becomes the subject. But there is no object in the sentence. And since there is no object, the verb is an intransitive verb. But in this sentence, Bob rides a horse. Bob rides a horse. Rides is, a sub, is the verb. Who rides? Bob rides. So it becomes the subject. And what does he ride? A horse. It becomes an object. So it is an transitive verb. Again, the girl ran down the street. Here, running is the, is the verb. Now, you might think that the street is the object. But the street is not the object. Why? Because we will consider this entire phrase as one. Down the street means going like going uh, through the street or wherever like going going somewhere so down the street the girl ran down the street here down the street is not an object the girl is the subject but the sentence does not have an object since there is no object it becomes an intransitive verb but in the sentence the girl ran a needle into her finger now what did she run a needle yes like where did she run the needle into the finger. Now finger is the object, girl is the subject and since it has an object it becomes a transitive verb. Birds fly. Now birds is the subject and there is no object so it becomes intransitive verb. Boys fly kite in the sky. Now boys is the subject and sky is the object, so it becomes a transitive verb. So thus, till now we've understood that if the verb has an object attached, it will be treated as, an, as, a, as a transitive verb, but if it does not have an object attached, it would be an intransitive verb. Now let us discuss the active and passive voice of a verb. Consider these two sentences. Hari does the work and work is done by Hari. Is there a structural dis a difference between both these sentences? You may pause the video and think over it. Now if I consider this both these sentences uh, Especially the first one, does is the verb because it is 
justifying the action what does the what 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 hurry something like what is done to the work by hurry he does it so hurry becomes the subject and work is the object so in the first sentence the structure says that the subject is doing some thing something whereas in the second sentence the work that is the object is done by subject so the structural difference is that the in the first sentence the subject is followed by the verb and then we write the object whereas in the second sentence we have written the object which is followed by the verb and then lastly we place the subject so this as we just said the structure of the first sentence is subject does the object whereas the second is object does the subject so the voice of a sentence denotes what is the structure of the sentence whether is it like the first one where the subject is doing something or whether it is the second one where is the where something is done by the subject now in case if subject is doing something the voice of the sentence is termed to be as active voice and if something is being done to the subject or by the subject the voice is termed as the passive voice in normal terminology i'll say the active voice justifies the action done by the subject so the active voice is it will justify the action done by the subject whereas the passive voice talks about the influence of the object yeah on the object by the work or by the verb done by subject so how is the object influenced by the subject if the sentence structure is written in this manner the voice is passive but if it's a simple normal sentence where you are asserting that the subject is doing something so that sentence is the active voice and to change the voice it is very simple Uh, the first sentence like the active voice is subject work and object to change it into the passive voice just bring the object first change the verb into the second form that is verb must be followed by e n e d or something and lastly put the subject so if hari does the work verb is done no does end in en to become done the work is done by hari now here are some examples of active and passive voices now this in the active form i say sita loves savitri now here sita is the subject savitri is the object to write write it a uh, passive form i'll first put the object so savitri comes first then i write this verb uh, change it into the second form so it becomes is loved by and then i put the subject so sita so the passive form would be savitri is loved by sita okay in the second sentence mason builds the wall mason is the subject and wall is the object now wall is being built by the mason now, wall is the object right and is being built by becomes the second form and mason is the subject he will finish the work by fortnight work will be finished by him now see uh, he is the subject case but since now i have to write the passive form i'll change the subject to the uh, Uh, object form right so this object of he is him so i'll write him here 
so as it becomes the object and by till the fourth who did this by whom was this done again who is the subject form whereas object of the same is whom so i'll write by whom was this done again the rule is simple make subject verb object make the object turn to subject and subject turn to object and verb is changed to the second form the rule is very simple certain times you may have a sentence where it might be changed to two or more different types of passive forms for example the guard refused him admittance now here the guard is the subject refused is the verb him is the object and even uh, admittance is a verb in a way the first way in which we may change the sentence to the passive form is that admittance was refused to him by the guard now what am i doing i am changing admittance treating it as a as a object as an object now if i look at the sentence i can say admittance although it is a verb but it is being treated uh, it is acting as a noun so i i treat it as a as an object and i put it in the subject case so i say admittance was refused to him by the guard now what did i do i treated admittance as an object and brought it in the starting of the sentence change the other verb and the guard since it is the subject so it becomes the object so it is it is based in the second way in which i change the passive form now what did i do i treated him as the object and wrote it in the subject case so he refused is the second form so it, it came as it is he was refused admittance by the guard uh, to re explain it i'll say that if i have to consider the sentence him and admittance him is also the object and admittance is also the object why because it is a verb that is acting as a noun now such verbs are known as gerund which we will discuss in some while so it is a verb that is acting as a noun now, one way to change this sentence into the passive form would be that treating admittance as a noun i bring it to the front and write the sentence or the other way would be treating him as the object i bring it into the front and write the sentence another example who taught you french who is the subject you is one object french is another so i may change it into the passive form by treating you as a subject uh, as an object french as an object or both as an object so if i treat you as an object i get who were you taught french by now here i am treating you as the subject or uh, as an object when i change it to the uh, passive form it becomes the subject if i treat french as an object i'll write by whom was french taught to you now, since object is french it will come in the front being the subject so the sentence becomes by whom was french taught to you and lastly if i treat both of them as objects the sentence would be by whom were you taught french now here you and french both are were the objects but now being treated as subjects and whom is the object in either case who is changed to the object case whereas the others are changed to the subject right mood now the mood of a sentence basically justifies the tone in which the verb is being used now, the verb may be placed in a manner that the sentence uh, seems to be a question or it may be placed in a manner that the sentence seems to be an assertion or it may be placed in a manner that it seems to be an exclamation so the placement of the verb decides the tone in which the sentence is say, uh, being spoken and this tone is referred to be as the mood of the sentence so the simplest work of the verb is to make the statement or ask a question now 
in the first example who wrote the letter wrote is placed in such a manner that it is it becomes a question and in the second sentence i write a letter it is just an assertion so or verb may also express a command write neatly you know you're commanding that person right so it becomes a command or it may express a supposition if i were you now i'm supposing that i were you so here were is placed in a manner that it is expressing a supposition so since it's expressing a supposition the mood would be supposing right so thus mood is the manner in which the verb is expressed it might be in the form of a question in the form of an assertion in the form of a command or in the form of a supposition so if i have to divide mood into its kinds i'll say it might be an indic indicative indicative mood or it may be an imperative mood the indicative mood is used to make a question or to ask uh, to or to make statements now if you are asking questions do you know him here no is placed it is being asked in the question form right but if you make in a statement you say he goes to school he just goes is placed to make a statement and in imperative mood it it will either express a command like wait there or an exhortation be steady or a prayer god save him now the choice of verb also depends on the person and the number of subjects for example if a sentence has a singular subject the verbs that follow must also be singular but if the sentence has plural subjects the verb that follow must also be plural so for example in this sentence he has an apple now he is a singular so since it's a singular i'll take a singular verb has is the singular verb likewise if i have a sentence like they have apples now they is a plural and since it's a plural it will take a plural verb so have is a plural verb another thing that we must keep in mind is that the verb also depends on the person being talked about uh we all know that there are three types of personal pronouns namely the first person the second person and the third person the pronouns of first person are i me etc second person it is you your etc and third it is he she it etc right so a very basic rule is that the first and the second person generally use the uh the plural forms of verb where are the third person it depends on the number of verbs so if it's a singular pronoun like he she it they'll take a single verb that is has is but if it's a plural pronoun it will take a plural verb for example they uses have or are likewise i uses am you also uses are so first and the second person use the uh, a different pronoun uh, sorry different verb whereas the third person uses based on the number of the subjects infinitives now infinitives are the most basic type of verbs that act as a noun in a sentence now for example consider the sentences i want to go or they tried to find the fault with us let us consider i want to go right now uh a misconception that many people or many students may have here is that the main verb here is go 
like many people might think that go is the main word but as we just discussed that main verb is where the action takes place in the sentence now the action is taking place in wanting to give you a better understanding if i uh, if i write the sentence as i want to go right and i remove the word to go from here the sentence that is left is i want which is something that conveys a little amount of meaning it is meaningful if i remove want from the sentence i get i to go right now this is very much obvious that i to go becomes an insignificant sense it uh, sentence it does not convey any meaning right and we have also said that a sentence has a subject and a verb only then it would be a meaningful complete sentence now subject in both the three cases is i and the verb can, uh, is added to the subject to convey some meaning so if i consider these two parts of the sentence i see a very small and uh, important thing that want forms the genesis or the main uh, base point of the uh, the sentence so if i remove want the sentence becomes insignificant it becomes uh, ill structured it becomes meaningless but to go does not have any signif uh, the removal of to go does not have any significant impact on the meaning of the sentence thus want is the main verb of my sentence whereas to go go is an action dependent on wanting that is the significance of going is only if want is present in the sentence that is this verb is dependent on another verb such verbs are known as infinitive so these are the dependent verbs on the other verbs in the sentence likewise they tried to find the fault with us now here finding might be thought to be the verb but it is not the verb tried is so find is an infinitive on tried so the form to go and to find are the infinitives another thing that will help you with Uh, your understanding is that generally the verbs that follow the word to so the preposition to this structure is an infinitive structure infinitive is a kind of a noun with certain features of verb so go here is not the verb but it is acting as a noun uh and the word is frequently used with the, the the word to is frequently used with infinitive so any word that has to would become an infinitive the verb that has to becomes an infinitive now for example in these sentences uh, there uh, there was nothing to fight about uh, or for no in this case if i try to find out where is the main verb i have two verbs here was and fight but fight is dependent on was if if there is no was in the sentence fight has no significance so to fight becomes the infinitive likewise i have come to see you here see is dependent on have so to see becomes the infinitive to retreat was difficult to advance was impossible now here i have one verb as retreat other as was and advance as the third one was again the verb now retreating is dependent on was likewise advancing is also dependent on was so the verbs to treat, retreat and to advance becomes the become the infinitives i'm not afraid to speak the truth so here speaking is dependent on am so to speak becomes the infinitive to toil is the lot of mankind now if i 
structureize this in tense and find out where are the verbs hidden. The verbs are in toil and is. Now, if I, I check which which verb is dependent on the other one, no, toil is dependent on is, so toil becomes the infinitive. It is a penal offense to bribe the public servant. Again, the verbs are in is and bribe. But which is dependent on the other one? Think over it. You may pause the video and think over it. The verb bribe is dependent on is. So to bribe becomes the infinitive. Let us discuss the concept of participles. A participle is that form of the verb that partakes the nature of both a verb and an adjective. In other words, participle is any verb that acts to be an adjective. Now, any verb that ends in ing and it is acting to qualify a noun or a pronoun. That is, it is telling you the quality of a noun or a pronoun. It becomes a participle. Why? Because ing makes it a verb and it, since it is qualifying a noun or a pronoun, it becomes an adjective. So, it becomes a For example, we met a girl carrying a basket of flowers. Now, uh, think over the sentence and think about where are the verbs. I am not asking you to find out which is the main verb, but just think about where are the verbs, where are the actions taking place. Now, if I see nicely, I find met and carrying are the verbs. Now the sentence has two verbs, met and carry. The subject is we now, since uh, who means we mean. Uh, the main verb is whatever the subject does. The subject does what? Now we did what? We met. So met becomes the main verb. We met whom? The girl. What sort of girl? Who was the girl? What was the quality of the girl? That she was carrying a basket of flowers. Now here, carrying is qualifying the girl, which is a noun. It is telling you the quality of the girl. What sort of girl? The girl was carrying a basket. So what was the quality or what was the characteristic of the girl that she was carrying the basket? So since carrying, it ends in ing, yes, it is a verb. And it is telling you the quality of the girl. So it's acting as an adjective. Since it's acting as an adjective and it is telling you the quality, uh, sorry, it is also a verb, it becomes a participle. So in these sentences, can you think about which are the participles? You may pause the video for a second and think about where are the participles. Now, if I look at it very closely, I find that receive is the main verb. Why? Because here the action is taking place. What do we do? We receive something and speaking becomes the participle. Having gained the truth, keep the truth. Now here, having gained the truth, that, uh, that is you know what is the truth, keep the truth that you must follow that. What is it? So where is the verb happening? It is happening in following, that is keeping. So keep becomes the main verb and having becomes the participle. I saw the storm approaching. No, what was the quality of the storm? That it was approaching. So it becomes an adjective, it is a participle. Hearing the noise, I turned around. Where is the work happening? Turn, turn is the work happening. And hearing the noise, what, 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 what happened to the noise? It, I heard it. So hearing is qualifying the noise. It becomes an adjective, it is, an, it is a participle. The enemy, beaten at every point, fled from the field. Where is the action happening? In fledding, that is running. And beaten, it is telling you the quality of the enemy. That what sort of enemy was it? That he was beaten. So beaten is an adjective. It becomes a participle.
where do we use participles now first is in continuous tenses now for example i am loving that is my nature is that i am caring i am loving so here i am loving am tells you my state of being and loving is my quality so it becomes an adjective it is a participle it may also be used to qualify the nouns or pronouns now rolling stone gathers no moss where is the action happening where is the action happening it is in gathering and rolling rolling is basically qualifying the stone that what is the quality of the stone that it is rolling so it becomes an adjective it is a participle lastly we may use the participles in subordinate clauses spring and one thing the swallows a pair now what what action happens that they a pair since they a pair it becomes the main verb and advancing is qualifying this very concept the main clause that what is what is the quality of the uh, this phrase that one when do the swallows a pair when the spring advances so advancing is qualifying the a pairing so it becomes a participle Let's discuss the concept of gerunds. As participles were the verbs that acted as a noun, oh sorry, adjectives. Gerunds are the verbs that act as a noun. So these are the verbs that end in ing and justify or force as a noun. So these are known as gerunds. For example, I say. Uh, marketing is not easy now here marketing is a verb but it is not acting as a verb why because it is the name of a process that i am talking about then what is not easy that is marketing so marketing is acting as a noun but it is a verb so it is a gerund here so they may be used as the subject of a verb object of a transitive verb or object of a preposition we'll discuss the examples related to this now for example playing cards is not allowed here now if i have to guess where is the main verb first of all i'll find where are the verbs in the sentence so one is playing and allowed as the second verb as i've just said we've just discussed playing is one verb and allowed in the second one now where is the verb work happening the work is happening is allowed in allowed where is the work happening right now in the sentence it is in allowed how about playing playing is the process of uh, it is the name of the process that is done to the card now what do we do with the cards we play so since playing is the name of something that is being done to the card and name of anything is known as a noun so it is acting as a noun and since it is acting as a noun it becomes a gerund let's take another example i like reading poetry you know we have two verbs like and reading now if i break the sentence i get i like reading if i remove like i get the sentence as i reading poetry and if i remove reading i like poetry now obviously i like poetry is a complete sentence whereas i reading poetry is not right so obviously like becomes my main verb how about reading what what do i call to that thing call that thing which uh, i do to poetry it is called reading and the name of anything is known as a noun hence reading becomes a gerund now in these sentences can we think about where is the gerund and where is the main verb you can pause the video again and think about the answers now he was found fighting now uh, where is the main verb obviously found is the main verb right and what was he doing he was fighting so this is acting as a noun it becomes a gerund he was ruined by sight uh, his uh, he has ruined his sight by reading small print now uh, where is the work happening 
in ruining and reading is the process that he did so it becomes a jared walking on grass is forbidden now what is forbidden walking on grass so is is the main verb and walking becomes the jared i was surprised as hari being absent now what is my state of uh, condition that i was so was becomes the main verb and the state of uh, being of hari is being which is an object so it becomes a jared the miser hated spending money so what did miser do he hated so it becomes the main verb and what did he hate spending money so it becomes a jared likewise praising all alike is like praising none we have two praising and one is so a is b that is uh, he is tall so is becomes the main verb right and praising in both the sentences are is jared now where do we use jared one they may be used as the subject of a verb now for example seeing is believing or as we've already done the example marketing is not easy right so marketing is not easy now what is not easy or who is not easy marketing it becomes a gerund likewise seeing here is the subject of the sentence and it is a gerund likewise object of a sentence now for example stop playing stop doing what playing so playing is acting as the object and it is also a noun so it's a gerund uh like this children love making what do children do they love what do they love making so making is an object plus it's a verb and objects are always nouns so this becomes a gerund object of a preposition that is uh for example we have he is fond of swimming now uh if i uh, read this sentence he is fond of swimming now where is the main verb is is fond fond becomes a uh, it's an adjective here right and he is fond of what swimming swimming is a noun uh, plus a verb right and it is basically signifying uh, or it is basically qualifying the preposition of so it becomes the object of the preposition it is the gerund here that gets us to the end of the discussion of verbs